in organic sodium, salt goes down and in. Sugar goes up and out to burn as fuel. So when you have excessive amount of sodium, then it starts to affect not only the joints, it starts affecting the heart muscle. Remember that it is an organic. So usually, when you go to a restaurant, you buy a food, they have sodium already because they put salt in the food. But you go back in the back of the table and you say, okay, I need some more salt. You start putting more salt in the food again. Excessive amount of sodium. You start having cancer and trouble in the heart eventually. Yeah? So sodium also contributes to high blood pressure. Yes, it does. Also cancer too. Cause it, it's causes the, the arteries to become very hard mm. so that the blood can flow through the circulatory system properly or the blood vessels. And that causes the heart to, to become lazy. So you salt know? harden your arteries? Yes. Okay. Inorganic salt. Inorganic. Not the one from the sea. So what is the best salt? Sea moss salt, from the sea moss. Himalayan okay. salt, the, the organic. Even celery have lots of sodium. Is sea salt the best source of salt? To me, it is. But you have Himalayan salt also. And there, there are different types type of salts. But you have to look at a salt that, that can, that have the organic sodium chloride that can move. Yeah, but the salt that we have to sprinkle on, in, in, on, on the food, that is inorganic sodium chloride. Sodium and potassium is like that. It's better you have a high potassium and a low sodium diet, yeah, than a high sodium and low potassium diet. High blood pressure can be caused from different things. You can get high blood pressure from the lung, pulmonary hypertension. You can get hyper, high blood pressure from the gallbladder, gallbladder congestion, because there's a meridian flowing from the gallbladder to the heart. You can get high blood pressure from the liver. You can get high blood pressure from what we call liver overload. You can get high blood pressure from the colon. You can get high blood pressure from the adrenals, from the endocrine glands, yeah? And you can also get high blood pressure from the, the vessels. If you have weak blood vessels, they're not strong enough. You can also, if the heart have to work extra hard, it can raise your pressure too. So you have to find out the cause of the pressure. And once you can find the cause of the person's pressure, then you can be pressed. So if a person has stress, for instance, good example, a person is stressful. And because they're stressful, uh, the cortisol level rises. It's a stress hormone. When that cortisol, cortisol level starts to rise, then the cortex and the medulla of the adrenals start to malfunction. And then you start having a high level of adrenaline in the bloodstream. And once you have a high level of adrenaline in the bloodstream, then it's moving into the blood, into the into the heart muscle and the heart start palpitating. You get what we call high blood pressure from that too. And in the process, you can get what we call a left ventricle hypertrophy, one of the chambers, which can cause congestive heart failure. Or you can have right ventricle hypertrophy, which can cause a fibrillation that can cause you to get preliminary embolism. So as I said before, high blood pressure can come from different places. But if you have high blood pressure in your family, and you have what we call a genetic pre this position of getting it, you can get it also because that's what I had when I was in the wrong way. My mother had a stroke. She had the second one kill my mother and I was eating the same way my mother was eating and I had high blood pressure also. But when I changed my eating habits, I repaired my high blood pressure.